It's here. It's Weather for Weather Geeks, the midweek edition. It's Wednesday, the 18th day of December 2024. Only a few more Weather Geek videos left in the year. Our last one for 2024 will be coming up on Monday. But between now and then, we'll keep talking about uh, the upcoming weekend, the Christmas forecast, and the longer range as well. And, you know, today went pretty much as expected. As nice as yesterday was, today was the opposite of that. It was just really, really crummy outside, especially during the uh, midday and afternoon when our rain and wet snow pushed in. And in fact, in some areas north of Interstate 80, and you'll see this here on our Ni uh, Niles uh, time lapse, the ground was whitened briefly. Uh, some small accumulations of snow did occur, uh, and it got washed away pretty quickly. But officially at the Youngstown Ford Airport, we did pick up 1.2 inches of snow today. Now, I don't believe for a second that there was ever 1.2 inches inches of snow on the ground at any one point. I was keeping an eye on, you know, not only the radar data, but uh, webcams as well. And well, certainly the ground was whitened in some places. Again, in Trumbull and Mercer counties, especially, uh, I'm a little skeptical that 1.2 was ever measured in any at any point at the airport. But nonetheless, that's the official reading, putting us to 9.9 .9 inches for the season. That's about 3.2 inches behind the average. Some radar estimates here, and again, I think some of these are a little overdone, but uh, the radar estimating that, you know, all told today, we might have picked up a couple of inches worth of snow in parts of Mercer County. Now, I haven't seen much evidence that there's ever been that sort of accumulation on the ground at any point, but yes, the, the ground certainly did get whitened at times when we had a pretty good thump of heavy, wet snow in those northern areas around lunchtime. Today, all of that wintry mix is now long gone. And yeah, there could be a passing flurry or two overnight, a couple of flurries emerging just east of Cleveland and south of downtown Cleveland right now. But that should about do it for tonight. Actually, a pretty quiet stretch of weather is coming up for tonight, the bulk of Thursday and into Thursday night. Here's kind of a summary of what I'm about to show you on our modeling. And you know, this is gonna turn pretty active again, I think, for Friday and the start of the weekend. But these snowflakes on Friday kind of kind of the best kind. It, you know, it's almost Christmas time. A lot of people are going to be out and about, and I think it'll be snowing in, in a lot of places as we get into the afternoon, but it's going to be not much more than mood snow, really. Flurries, maybe a snow shower that reduces the visibility for a time, but I think it's going to have a hard time sticking to much, especially paved surfaces on Friday. Same idea Friday night, a couple of flurries around. Now, Saturday's a little more interesting, and I'll show you the modeling in just a second. I think there'll be some bonafide lake effect giving some localized, perhaps, accumulations on Saturday. Maybe enough to uh, at least whiten the ground in some spots as we kick off the weekend. And the cold air becomes the story over the weekend. It'll be dry, it'll be cold Sunday into the daylight hours Monday. Monday night, we might see a little bit of wet snow, but then whatever occurs Monday night, I think it changes over to just chilly raindrops for the bulk of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It's not exactly going to be warm outside for Christmas, but it'll be warm enough that anything that falls from the sky is more than likely going to be rain, I think, for Christmas this year. In the meantime, the short term looks like this. So just clouds for a Thursday. Here comes this Alberta Clipper system. And especially as we get into the afternoon on Friday, I think there'll be some snowflakes around. This is not going to be one of those Alberta Clipper systems that's strengthening as it dumbbells through the southern Great Lakes. It's actually going to be weakening. And so while there's going to be flakes in the air, particularly again after lunchtime. I don't think it adds up to much. Same idea Friday night, some flurries around. And then on Saturday, that clipper system's gone. And I could see where we have a window here on Saturday where we have some fingers of lake effect with perhaps a connection up to Lake Huron at times that gives some localized accumulations. Now, is it going to be several inches? No, I don't think so. But could someone see at least the ground whitened or maybe even a couple of inches out of this? Perhaps. I can't rule that out, um, but it's going to be very localized. It's not going to be something that everybody gets, but it's going to be possible that, uh, you know, for a time on Saturday, there's going to be a couple of bonafide and lake effect snow bands extending all the way from Lake Huron across Lake Erie, all the way down perhaps into the mountains of West Virginia. So all that being said, what about our white Christmas chances? I've been talking about this on Weather for Weather Geeks over the last several days. Historically speaking, 45% chance. Uh, that we meet the criteria for a white Christmas. And, you know, that criteria does not mean it snows on Christmas Day. You just need an inch or more of snow on the ground at 7 a.m. on Christmas morning when the official observation is taken. Historically speaking, 45% chance that occurs. This year, we're going to bump our percentage down to 10%. Not going to take it to zero yet because, again, I think some of us might see some accumulation on Saturday that might try to stick around, might try to stick around into Tuesday night for Christmas Eve. And perhaps, you know, a little more snow for Monday night before pr probably a changeover to rain on Tuesday. So even if we were to get some small accumulations Monday night, 
kind of suspect it's washed away by rain on Christmas Eve day on Tuesday. So the percentage is low, but it's not quite zero just yet because, you know, we're going to have a couple of chances for some snowflakes, I think, in the run-up to Christmas morning. All right, we're also coming to the end of the year. I've been starting to compile the stats for 2024, and boy, are they impressive. Um, the number one weather story here locally is going to be the warmth. Now, we've had, we had a couple of tornadoes earlier this year in our viewing area, and we had, you know, very dry uh, months, uh, severe drought designation in parts of our area. Those are kind of some of our bigger weather stories for the year, but the number one story is going to be how warm the numbers have been. I think we're going to run the table and go 12 for 12 with regard to our uh, temperatures, 12 months out of 12, warmer than the average. And 1931 is at the top of the list as far as warmest years on record since reliable record keeping began in 1930 in our area. Now, not included on this you know, top 10 list is the year 1930 and 1932. They probably would make the list, but there's enough missing data those years that I don't want to include them in the list. So excluding those two warm years in the 1930s, we're at least going to have the warmest year in 2024 since the 1930s. And we're even, you know, we're flirting with the top of the list here. Um, and, you know, it looks pretty warm that last week of December. So, you know, it's going to be a close call, I think, as far as uh, maybe tying. We're coming very close to tying 1931. So a lot of years from the 1930s on there. And, you know, if you're watching this deep into weather for weather geeks, you're, you know, chances are you're scientifically inclined enough to know that, uh, of course, the 1930s being warm in parts of North America does not mean global warming was not is not a thing or climate change is not a thing. But just to uh, kind of show some data, here's a look at uh, temperatures globally in the 2000s, since 2000 through to, uh, 2023 and just about the entire planet, of course, warmer than the average. Here's a look at the 1930s. Now, of course, we had a lot of warm years in our area in the 1930s and a lot of the Corn Belt as well. But look how isolated this warm patch was in the 1930s over North America. The rest of the world, with the exception of the Arctic, um, was not very warm at all in the 1930s. So, you know, I always like to bust out those graphics whenever I, you know, kind of compare recent temperature trends to what for a lot of North America was a very warm stretch back in the 1930s. All right, that's it for me on tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. On Thursday, we'll take another look at snow chances coming up as we head towards the final weekend before Christmas. We'll update the white Christmas forecast again, and we'll talk a little bit more about the longer range, what lies ahead beyond uh, New Year's Day and the start of 2025. I, like I said, if you've been watching this video lately, I, I, I do think that we're going to have a pretty rocking uh, January of 2025.